Well, your panel's coming on very well, Beverly. Yeah, well, what I've done is we have stuck the panel to the acrylic using um, a variant of something like Sikaflex, Marine Flex. Um, so these crumbled corners are no longer an issue and it's all sealed. And what we will do is we'll drill four holes in this and we'll secure this. But the first job is to test it. Yet again. Because we've cleaned all the contacts, we have put oil in appropriate places to keep moisture out. So now we've got to put it all back together and see that the darn thing actually functions. One of the other things that we have noticed is that the glow plug light does not seem to come on. Um, but when we check the glow plug reel on the engine with the, um, the multimeter, it shows voltage. So we think we're fine. So that's something we'll retest. If the light doesn't come on, I'm not really too concerned because I didn't actually know we had a glow plug light. I've never looked at it for years. I just push the button and we just go with it. I just assume it works. Okay, so that should go. Like that. Looking good. We've polished all the connectors together, put them all together, and it's working. Um, when we put it in, it, it, it threw a few faults. I tightened up the connector as hard as I could go, and everything just lit up again. So it does seem to be working now. But that's the main connector, the one that connects the... It's the big knobbly black connector which um, connects the bolts loom to the panel. But the panel is all cleaned out, all the corrosion's taken out, any damp is out of the panel. It's all been oiled and put back together again. So we've done everything we can do. And um, all the lights on the indicator panel are lighting up normally. So as far as we can tell, we've cleaned everything and we've got rid of the intermittent fault, we hope. We will seal it with marine silicon, not Sikaflex. The reason being that if we use something like Sikaflex, there's no point in screwing it on. You may as well just, you may as well weld it in place if you're using Sikaflex. With marine sealant, it's a silicon sealant, but it's just like bathroom sealant in your house. It can be peeled off and taken off. So we need to remove this panel again. We can get the marine sealant off. We'd never get Sikaflex off. So it's gonna be marine silicon, seal it all up, a couple of screws in the corners to hold it, job done. It's complete frustration here on Salty Lass um, because um, it was working, it was working, it was working. We put the sealant on and then it's not working. So it's just so frustrating. But what we've done is we've um, used the camera on macro mode on the actual connector that just seems to be a bit dodgy. And uh, we can actually see rust, but only when you really uh, intensify it a bit. It's not really rust, it's just corrosion on terminal one, which is the power supply in to the panel. So we're going to clean that, but unfortunately we're going to have to do that tomorrow because we've got sealant and gloop everywhere. <laughs> so we've got to let that dry so that... We can scrape it off with a knife. So we can scrape it off with a knife. So it's complete and utter frustration here on Salty Lass. Well, I'm so glad that we use marine silicone um, for doing the edging of the uh, panel. Because <laughs> we only put it in yesterday and uh, already we're cleaning it up. But we use that particular sealant because we know that it will come out at some point in time in the future. So... Okay, fair enough, ours was in a day, but the, the point is the same. With marine silicone, you can clean it up, um, you know, and I'm using WD-40 to clean it up, but you can do it. But also, the other problem is intermittent faults. Um, they are so hard to track down. Uh, you literally have to take every single connector apart, clean it all up, and um, as you saw... Um, we got uh, rust in around, um, it's not really rust, it's corrosion in around one connector and we're hoping that that's it but it's just so frustrating because you've got to clean everything um, because it's the only way to uh, get rid of an intermittent fault. And then you put it back together and if the fault's gone you've won and if the fault's still there you move to the next component. Basically yes, so it's a lot of checking and a lot of uh, going back and forth. But so it's enormously tedious. It's so 
so tedious but that's why it's frustrating as well but there you go all three lights are bronzing yeah. I'm going to do the glow oh it's come on brilliant well I've now sealed the panel in with some mastic and things like that and we've given it a retest and I'm glad to say that all the lights are coming on so it could just be our trouble seeing the glow plug light and the strong sunlight but everything appears to be as it should be the engine's running again um happy days well we've just had a uh, guest aboard and he has given us a whole load of extra camera equipment uh so um we've got an extra you know gopro like uh, camera um so that means that we'll be able to do some more action shots we've also got um uh, this camera um which is for um it's it says it's a 360 but it's actually a 180 degree uh fisheye lens so that's going to give you such a huge wide view but we've also got lots of uh, cool brackets and stuff and i love this one i mean so this is going to do my action shots but the problem is i think i need a smaller head it just doesn't go round all together at all but but yeah it's great Well, I think we can kiss that camera goodbye. Well, the weather's improved a bit, hasn't it? Yeah, but it's uh, still um, howling uh, quite well outside. Uh, but luckily we've got an indoor job, so we're going to carry on with this. But uh, what we do initially is we put everything in. We're going to do the... Um, Basically, it's like a dry install um, of all the wiring. That way we can do continuity tests, make sure that everything is working. But because I'm uh, putting this um, in and I'm not going to have it straight away, I'm just going to put a bit of masking tape over the top just so that if um, it won't short with anything within the um, battery compartment here. But the main thing that you have to worry about when you're wiring, obviously you need to think about um, uh, the thickness of the wire. Um, so the higher the current, the thicker your wire needs to be. Um, so that's why sometimes in power lines they have really, really high voltages so that the wires uh, don't have to be as thick um, for the current loads. So they do it through voltage. Um, but anyway, um, when you do have a thick wire like I have here, you've got to be careful about uh, what's called the bend ratio. So basically, you don't want a sharp bend. A thin wire like this one here, it can be really, really flexible and bend quite easily. Whereas a thicker wire, you just sort of like got to be more careful on its bend. Um, it's always got to be multi-stranded wire on a boat because... Um, a uh, single core wire um, gets very brittle and will break quite easily. Um, so always go for multi-strand wire. Well, I'm so glad that we've only just done the small holes uh, to mount this box uh, because um, we close the lid of where the seat will go and it's just catching on the top of the switch. So we've got to bring it down by a whole centimetre um we've had to put it a little bit further out than we wanted to because inside uh this unit there's an actual bracket so it's just we've got it slightly wrong but it's only three small holes and they're it's only be... three small holes and we can correct it now whereas, and, they're, and they're covered by the box yeah whereas if we did it wrong before if we'd have done the big holes that would have been a right mess it would but we haven't done the big holes yet so Let's get this mounted in the right place first. When I'm uh, installing um, this breaker, there's a couple of things that I'm thinking about. One of them is the bend radius of the wires. Uh, the one that I bought from the car uh, shop uh, is a very thick wire. And because it's very thick, it doesn't, ha it doesn't bend very easily. 
So for that one, what I'm doing is I'm going up and round so that even though it's bending, it's bending slowly. Whereas um, the other wire, which is our 10 millimeter square wire, um, that actually bends easier. So that one is my shorter wire because it will just, um, it will go down and through. So you just have to think about your bend radius. Why did you buy such a thick wire? Well, it's basically the thick one. <laughs> it's just the fact that I could buy it in um, a car shop. When you're putting um, any wiring in uh, whatsoever, um, always make sure that you do your continuity test. And what's a continuity test? Basically... Not, well, every, not everybody knows. <sighs> so in this particular circuit, I have a battery a buzzer and two wires and um, when the two wires are apart the buzzer does not buzz um, and then when I put the two wires together I get a buzz. So what you're saying here is if you put those two wires on either end of an electrical circuit yeah they will either buzz if the circuit is working yeah or they'll not buzz if there's a break in the wiring. Correct. Yeah have you got the beep beep one? Yeah, the beep beep's on. on. Okay, so we do that. No circuit. So I push this up. And I... Well done. Well, that seemed to work all right. Yeah, so uh, now that it's uh, fine, what I can do is we can pull the wire through the boat because that way uh, we'll have the spare wire over there so that we can mount the... Um, DC to AC converter in the place that we want rather than in the middle Why of the... are we putting it on the far side of the boat? What's the logic there? Um, more to do with um, this is the access area and we walk down this uh, all the time and the last thing I want is uh, to lose my shin whereas over there doesn't get much um, traffic so um, if it's underneath the bench, which is where it's going to go, um, there's not much. To, and that's why I want it in that far corner. Because nobody goes there. Very. Well, you can't, can you? There's nowhere you, to go. Nowhere to go. It's very difficult. You don't really walk past that area. So over there is uh, ideal for this unit. Now, what I was going to do is take this out. You don't need to. If you can just... Um... You can just feel it coming through. I can just pull it very gently because I am getting movement on it. Okay. And I've got nearly enough movement on it. I don't think I actually need to bring it any further because look, look where I've stopped. Yeah, let me just see if I've got enough. Because once I've, I agree, once I've got this one through, it's actually here. Oh, is there already a hole there? That will take you through the hole. Well, we'll see how we do. Stage two is now complete, yes? Yes, um, we've got the inverter in. Beverly did a great job of screwing that in. Uh, but basically, um, we have a, um, a, a four-way drop connected to our AC supply here. And if I need to, I can just put it in. I need a little torch down there so that it's quite easy and then we'll have power to the table which is where our four-way drop is so you know we will be able to run everything from here but yeah it's nice and convenient out of the way hopefully and that that roaring noise in the background is the tea, break. tea time because um, we've now got two more holes to drill and wires to, and connect, wires up. to connect up and then and we've got continuity testing uh, yeah but we've just realised that um, we haven't actually tested the unit. <laughs> but I can tell you now, we won't be able to take it back because it's two years. It's two years old, so if it doesn't two work. Two years old, yeah. If it doesn't work, we're mucking. We're, we're banjaxed. There we go. Let's see how cranky. It's certainly wide enough. I'll have to come out. That's a pan head, that one. Well, I've got all the cables in. Um, I've terminated um, the connections on the DC to AC converter so they're all done so everything is in but now it's bite the bullet time and actually attach it to the batteries so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all I'm going to turn off 
the um, AC to the AC supplied to the boat. I'm now going to turn off the boat electrics. So that's that. Oh wow! It's all dark now, and I'm also actually going to. We have a, a relay uh, for the. Um, it's not a relay. It's a, a breaker for the solar panels coming into the boat but because they can provide charge i'm going to turn that off as well wrong socket i need a 12. right okay oh no it's more to do with the fact that you're having to disturb a working system aren't you Bev? yeah the thing is we've got a, a perfectly good 12 volt electric system it's been working beautifully for years and now we're fiddling with it i hate that sort of thing <laughs> <laughs> basically beverly's on the AC to DC converter uh, because we're doing that at the same time and uh, we're now doing the termination on that one aren't we Bev? We are. So, Well that connector looks a bit worse for wear doesn't it? Yeah this is the uh, solar panel connector which comes down to the battery and like Bev says it's a bit worse for wear but um, as soon as I found that there's a problem I'm going to um, recrimp this and sort that out. Um, basically it's giving us a great opportunity to inspect connectors, just check things out um, and if we see an issue like this we're going to correct it. Uh, another issue while we're here um, that's always a problem is um, our fridge. Uh, that's one of the places that, uh, because it's um, the amount of current it wear, uh, draws, if you have any issues with your connectors, uh, giving them a quick sand every now and then um, just helps uh, the connectivity. Well, our trials and tribulations uh, continue. Um, the Sterling charger is now wired across the boat. Um, so hopefully that will just make sure that both batteries are charged uh, in sync with each other. But with regard to the uh, DC to AC converter, this is the cable that I purchased from the car manufacturer. And uh, despite uh, putting a split in it, um, let me just uh, open it up for you. Despite putting a split in the hole, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the bolt just will not go through that. Well, um, the good thing about being in a marina is that you have neighbours. So this is our crimping tool. Um, and this is more than adequate to go up to, say, six uh, millimeter squared cable. Um, but because this is the battery cable that I bought from um, the car shop, trust me, it's, it's a bit heftier than that. Um, but this is the crimpers that um, a neighbour has um, loaned us and um, this is much more... You can cut that out. <laughs> no, I think I might leave that in actually. Carry on. Uh, but as you can see, this is a much bigger crimp. So, um, uh, as I say, because it's such a big wire, uh, this has a um, stripper. Uh, I'm going to have to uh, resort to the knife method which is basically you just score a knife and then uh, pull, it, pull the insulation off. But at the end of the day, as long as you get the job done, that's all that matters. I have to say, after you dropped that, you went into auto-waffle mode. Did I? Totally. Okay. <laughs>